The tsunami came from over there around 4 o'clock, all the way over this 3,000 meter runway, and almost reached the end of the runway. I ran and I made it, but my husband wasn't able to outrun the tsunami. The Japanese earthquake was devastating. The supply chain was damaged, not only the domestic link, but the international supply chain as well. The modern Japan was born in fire and destruction. In 1945, America unleashed two atomic bombs on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, ending Japan's involvement in World War II. For three decades from 1960, Japan experienced what was called the post-war economic miracle, and it established itself as the world's second largest economy right up until 2010. The reason for this miracle was the technical know-how and the manufacturing of some of the world's most advanced products like motor vehicles and electronics. Japan has the world's 10th largest population with over 127 million people. Today, two-thirds of its economy is service-driven. With a labor force of roughly 66 million workers, Japan has a low unemployment rate of about 5%. We have an excellent workforce and manpower, which is well-educated and diligent. Senior analyst for R&I, an international credit ratings company in Tokyo, Kenji Sekiguchi, talks about what made Japan's economy boom in the 60s. I think the high growth era of the 1960s, where um, the, our per capita GDP grew at 8.8%, which is quite a stunning growth rate was, in my opinion, was the good showcase of what well-educated and diligent workforce can achieve. This phenomenal growth continued into the 1980s. The 1980s was a time when Japan enjoyed a very steady economic growth. However, in the second half of the 80s, the Japanese economy overheated with rising stock and rising real estate prices, which led to the Tokyo Stock Exchange crash in 1990 and 1992. Growth slowed to 1.5%, pushing Japan into its economic lost years. Akio Dobashi of Japan's Business Federation knows the end is nowhere in sight. The stagnant economic circumstances continued and there was the so-called lost 20 years which we have not managed to exit from yet. I do personally believe that deflation is quite dangerous. People's mindset had adapted to the deflationary atmosphere. This might be playing some role in why we do not see any jumping out of the mild recovery. In 2010, China overtook Japan and climbed into second place behind the United States. By most estimates, China's economy will become the largest in the world between 2016 and 2018. Through Japan's foreign direct investment into many products made in China, this has benefited China and in turn will assist in Japan's growth. I believe if the Chinese economy is successful, then the Japanese economy can grow together in tandem and therefore it should be well. But not everyone agrees. There's a country growing at the 10% per annum next door and here we have only just mere 1%. Some people feel so unhappy because, you know, we used to be a, a superior in the economy. Japanese retired foreign affairs official Naoto Amaki is quick to reassure that anti-China sentiment in Japan is in the minority. Majority people uh, welcome that it's good because China uh, getting prosperous and big economy, then our economy also uh, being helped. China's workers take home about $4,000 a year. In Japan, it's almost 10 times that amount. 
but it's China that is reaping the benefits with their cheaper products and cheaper labor. Japan dropping into third place isn't the only thing to change in the last decade. Sharp, Panasonic, Sony, Toshiba and Hitachi are losing market share to Samsung and Apple. This was once a market dominated by Japan in the 1980s and 90s. In 2012, the Japanese economic downturn has left its mark on the giants of Japan's economy amounting to a loss of $17 billion. Since 2000, the big five Japanese electronic firms have lost two-thirds of their value. The reasons for this are multiple. Rising yen, struggling economy, missed opportunities and rising competition. But the sickness runs deeper. Too many Japanese firms make similar things. Mobile phones, more than 10 make rice cookers and 6 make televisions. The overlap is inefficient. Companies like Sony seem to have lost their way as leaders in innovation, according to Hironaga Miyama, managing director of the Tokyo Stock Exchange. I don't know what the exact reasons why Sony has fallen behind and why Korea has succeeded of late, but what I can say is companies like Sony have to focus more effort and resources on research and development. Satoshi Iwai of Nippon Telegraph or Telephone or NTT echoes these concerns and talks about the importance of manufacturing and new ideas. Japan used to be known for its manufacturing ability. Manufacturing is about making new innovative ideas. My concern is that the Japanese people have started to forget manufacturing because most of them haven't done the work of creating things. But Japan's high-tech prowess can be found in leading American products like Apple, as Masashi Murumachi, director of Toshiba, points out. Japan still has the ability for innovation and creating state-of-the-art materials. For example, the iPad, which is the latest and most popular electronic device you can find. Many of the parts were made or developed in Japan. So where does Japan see its recovery happening? Actually, we did have economic recovery in this last decade or last two decades, almost. Uh, but the recovery always started with the export. Exports have long been the silver bullet for Japan's hopes to recover from its stagnant economy. And before last year, things looked promising. Until something happened that nobody could have ever predicted. March 11th.